Five self-defense training course, you're gonna discover how not to use your self-defense cane to defend yourself. Stop training with your walking cane or your self-defense cane like this. I'm gonna show you what this is and why you don't wanna do it. But first, we're gonna start with this warm-up and we're gonna get right into the first thing that you have to stop doing. And it's related to this spin. Let me show you the spin first. This cane is the rattan cane. I'm shipping one of these out to you. If you win the drawing this month, I'm gonna draw this cane some name out of the hat on May 15th. I've got a brand new one in the plastic. This is the Rattan Dojo training cane. It's very fast, it's very quick. It's a great way to start. It's extremely durable. I've been beating on this one for over a year and a half now. Start with your hand on the crook. The long side is gonna come out of your thumb and you're gonna crank it forward. Now, we're gonna start right away. Stop training with your walking cane like this. Self-defense cane carries a lot of different techniques within all the different instructors who teach it, all the different styles that you're gonna see. You're gonna see a lot of different techniques and a lot of them, a lot of schools are all gonna do this spinning. So you know, the spinning is very common, maybe not so much in traditional like Hapkido cane, but you get into cane foo, you get into American Cane Masters or however that goes. Cane Masters is, is the brand. A lot of Cane Masters, uh, Master Gary Hernandez does the spin. Uh, Master Mark Shuey started us all off on this beautiful journey, most of us anyway. I did Hapkido Kane before I ever met uh, or went to a seminar with Master Shuey. I never saw that style, his Kane Master style. But everybody now spins, and you'll see a lot of this spinning. And you'll see different versions, and you'll see it going over the backhand, and there's even back here and around. I'm not very good at that one. I don't practice it enough but people get stuck on the spin as the self-defense move and they use that ex exclusively. It's fun, it's easy to do. So they spend a lot of time spinning for self-defense and you get convinced that spinning allows you to strike, which it does. Spinning gets your hands stronger in this grip, which is true. Spinning allows you to make contact with something like a bag or a stack of tires and get used to what it feels like when you hit against something. And that's not the whole purpose of spinning. The spinning, whole purpose of spinning is to condition your body for all of the self-defense moves that you're gonna use, but it's not only to keep somebody back. In other words, moving around, menacingly spinning, daring somebody to come in seems to make sense, but it, I come from a very long, tradition of spinning weapons. I've been spinning weapons since I was a little kid and I'm an old person now. And I understand that all of the spinning weapons from the long martial arts staff to the, the nunchucks, the two piece staff, to even the three piece nunchucks, those big, that long uh, three piece, three section staff, that's what it's called. All of that spinning looks cool, works really well in movies like Darth Maul, right? In the Star Wars movies, chops people up. That's a movie that is not used in combat. It's not used in daily self-defense, real self-defense, real situations. What's used is standing still, being able to move, stepping out of the way, striking, following through, striking with intention, hitting with speed, power, balance, coordination, but not necessarily spinning. Spinning has a rhythm. And if you ever meet any great fighting coach, whether it's a martial arts style, or a traditional boxing style, everyone will say the same, same thing. Don't get into a rhythm when you fight. Those rhythms are time. If you get an experienced boxer, experienced MMA fighter, and they instinctively will be able to time your rhythm. So you have to break up your rhythm. You don't wanna get into a rhythm. And what is this if not a rhythm? Even if you're changing directions and you're changing the spin, you're still spinning by nature of the way it works with the rhythm, right? And it's fun, it's cool, it's exciting, but get out of, stop training self-defense cane, stop using your walking cane just for spinning in self-defense and understand that the spinning has great benefits. That doesn't mean stop doing it, but move beyond it. Use the spin to get the blood to flow in the joint as a warm up. Use the spin to get your heart rate up. Use the spin to build speed, strength, balance in your core. Everything has to squeeze, whether you're standing or sitting. And yes, 
you should practice this sitting. And you might not have a choice. You have to sit. But practice it both ways. And even practice striking through your spin. You can, but it's not the most effective. The most effective for your self-defense, and here's, here's the point. You don't want to play around and do the wrong technique when you only get one shot, one chance to keep the predator, the bad guy, the thug, off of you, especially if they have a weapon or a knife where there's multiple attackers. And you've got to move fast and go from one to the next to truly, really, practically, realistically defend yourself. You don't want to be... Get, you get caught spinning, bounces off their head, or they run in as you're coming here, or like Master Gary Hernandez did in one of his great videos sometime last year. He said, you know, he he addressed the same same question, spinning in self-defense, and he used uh, one of his students, and he just threw a backpack full of books in it, a book bag, at the guy while he was spinning, and it totally disrupted his flow. It stopped him, and then as it disrupted him, he was able to close the gap and cause massive damage. That's what you don't want. So instead of spinning for self-defense, you have to stop using your walking cane like this. You have to stop using your walking cane spinning as self-defense. And understand, spinning makes your self-defense more effective. Builds speed, strength, power, balance in your hand. Let's go over real quick in case you're beginning and you need to know how to do it. Your hand closes, long side out of the hand, there's just a soft hole right here, soft grip, not too thing, not too hard. Yes, I'm gonna show you that. I'm sure I've got a backpacker here too. <laughs> I got a whole bunch in the back. I got all kinds. Everything from the rucksacks that I used in training, when I did a certain kind of training in the military that are modified. You modify your backpack when you do a certain kind of training. So you're going over and back, over and back. I can remember this, uh, Taylor, something Taylor's, some of you guys know, out in uh, Washington, I think. They're, you send it to a company and they put more pockets on it. Think about slapping here, coming across. But yeah, you can do squats with your backpack. But let me show you a smarter way than doing it with it on your back. I'm going to show you that before we're done because this is how I train. Now, number two, big, wide strikes stop using your walking cane like this stop training with your walking cane with these big ineffective too broad too wide too too much of a motion that that's coming out here you're going to run into something that's overhead like the ceiling maybe you're on a bus a train maybe you're in a plane you don't have the room over your head so it's not going to work also it's coming from the side and in see what i'm doing here when you train your strikes i'm going to show you a few strikes that i want you to train today when you train your strikes, bring them from your shoulder. From your shoulder, push and follow through. You're still gonna get that arc, which is extremely powerful for self-defense. Now again, this is the rattan uh, walking cane, rattan dojo cane. I'm gonna send one of these to one of the members. If you've joined here, or you've joined on Patreon, or if you go to pasquinoli.com, send me a contact, that contact box, fill it out, say that you want to be entered in the drawing for the can. I'm gonna draw it on May 15th. But now, I wanna show you my favorite training cane, which is the Cane Masters. This is an oak, I like it better because it's stiffer, it's more stiff, and it's harder, and it is, uh, it's heavier. It hits so much harder than the rattan cane. The rattan is a great option when you get started. This is my everyday, I just wanna show you, because I had it with me, I brought it in from the car this morning. It's got this, so if your hand gets uh, sweaty, you can put it through there. If you need to, you're stuck in the woods, you, you have some paracord, 550 cord. It's got those eyeballs, like them or not. Look at that though, that's to rake across their face. To pull all of the skin off, the bone. That's for self-defense, that's a self-defense tooth. And then that, that bar right there, that bar of oak, this is a hard, hard piece of wood. And it's treated, especially with this is Cane Masters, Everyday carry cane. You can look at the link below if you want to see what these combat canes look like and how much they cost. But that right there, that's like a dull blade of a katana, of a sword. And when you bring that in against someone's arm, it's going to break that bone for self-defense. This is the, uh, it's going to sh uh, shatter it. There's no question. Good, make your own cane. I always say invest your time before you invest your money. Go to, someone brought it up last week. They said go to uh, 
Goodwill store. Go to the Goodwill store. There's a lot of canes there. You can imagine why. A person passes away. You don't mind using a person's cane for after they passed away. Go, you know, spray it down. I'm sure it wasn't the COVID. You're not going to get anything. Go get a cane for two, two to four dollars. And now invest your time. Learn how to do the basic motions. Right now we're talking about striking from the shoulders, strike from the shoulders, keeping it tight. Instead of, stop using your cane like this. Your self-defense cane will not work. You won't be able to defend yourself with a walking cane if you have these big, open, wide, ineffective, slow, poor accuracy strikes. And we all do. I did. We all do when you first start. All your strikes look like this. They're too wide. They're too far away from the body. And they, they only cross the center line down here. And the target is right there. And it'll be hard for you to hit that target. You won't turn your body unless you train from the start from your shoulders. So your hands are here. Your guard is up. Hello to everybody who's on right now. I appreciate you guys so much, especially those of you who've joined. But all of you are my members. We're all in this together. Not in the COVID way, but we're all in the... This is our dojo. This is our virtual dojo, our online martial arts school. From here, self-defense academy, whatever you want to call it. From your shoulder, coming forward, it's extremely fast, effective. It's going to be a lot more accurate. It's going to hit with more speed, power, balance. And you have to stop using your walking cane like this for self-defense. It's not going to work. Always from here, you're going to be fighting always from behind your stick. Now, they have a knife. This is the threat. You have distance between you and the threat. You have this par bar of wood, this piece of oak. You have distance. You have something that's not going to get cut. Well, it might get cut, but it's not going to bleed, right? And it'll nick it a little bit. You can sand that out later. I'd rather have them try to cut my piece of wood than cut my skin, tendons, muscle, all the arteries in there, all that stuff. I can't use it. Bleed out. Horrible stuff, right? So use your cane. Get it between you and the threat. And from your shoulder, strike. From your shoulder, strike. It has to come from your shoulder. It has to come from your shoulder so that it's coming from here to here to defend yourself coming straight forward. Then from there, you can bring it over top. You can bring it down to the knee. You can bring it from the side. And finally, use this tooth to rake across the body, down through the middle for self-defense. Stop using your cane for as a grabbing tool to grab and pull them down, to lift them up. Understand that you use that to rake, rake. Re put that up there, right in that muscle, right from the back, and pull, snapping them down and in, just across the body, across the body for self-defense. Stop using your walking cane like uh, the old gong show. I know you guys, some of you guys are older as me. You remember the old gong show? They hit the gong and they reach out with a cane and pull the bad singer off, the bad actor, or the bad juggler, the bad magician. They use the cane to clear the stage. That's not what this is for. It's not to grab, twist. You can do that, but first learn how to reach up and snatch them in, how to rake them in, how to pull them down. Make those three adjustments first. Number one, learn how to use spinning to improve your strikes, to improve your grip, to improve your cardiovascular fitness, to improve your strength in your core, to get stronger and faster when you do self-defense techniques, but don't use spinning for self-defense. Number two, get rid of, stop using your walking cane like this with these big, wide, ineffective strikes. Get it on your shoulder and practice these strikes first. One, two, one, two, one, over and over again. On a bag, on a stack of tires, or in the air. Doesn't matter, but fight from behind your stick. Number three, use this crook for what it's made for. Reach up and snatch them out. Snatch something through. Come through, that's gonna remove everything there for self-defense. Punch them with it, rake. Punch them with it, and rake. Practice that. Punch, rake. Punch, rake. Make those small adjustments. Learn some more stuff here. Send me that contact information if anybody entered in the drawing for the cane. I'll see you guys in a little bit. Thank you.